So we're going to get started. So uh, just to recap the information that's on this slide, uh, just for housekeeping, uh, everyone on the line is muted. Um, and there, you can use the, the WebEx uh, client to send your questions. Um, and we'll take a look at the end. Um, you can send those questions you know, as you think of them, and uh, it won't interrupt anything. Um, so yeah, here's the end. Just use the, the chat box. Uh, and uh, here's the Krista's email. She's our administrator today. Uh, main technical. So, uh, the agenda. So, uh, me, I'm speaking to Zoe and Jones. Uh, I'm embedded teams engineer at TMC. So, I'm going to go over um, what is the NDN cloud. Uh, a, a little brief note on the, the roadmap of the cloud, you know, over the next uh, year and a half. Um, how to use uh, or what you guys are available in the Indian cloud. Uh, I have how to use them here, but uh, we won't go into that kind of detail. And how how can you access and who can access the Indian cloud? Uh, follow that, um, Ram and Dev, uh, who's, somebody, who's one of our CAD experts that we work with, uh, over uh, is the STC. Uh, so that term um, might be meaningless to you at this point, so I'll talk a little bit about it, then Ram and we'll go into over depth on that. Uh, he'll also talk about about um, the capture, which is a tool in the environment that can really help um, the low-level details that might not be important to your design work uh, if you just want to get using uh, the tools in the environment. Following that, uh, uh, Greg will give us an overview of the silicon photonics operating in the cloud. Um, so we'll talk about the, the experience of getting it there because it is our, our first, uh, Redesign environment that is uh, working and there's a lot of uh, people kicking the tires. So uh, and, uh, we'll take it at the end. Uh, we, we schedule an hour for this and it's a 45 minute agenda. Um, so hopefully we'll have lots of time for questions. Um, and also uh, I'll talk about some possible next steps uh, at the time as well. So, in the end, clouds. So, what it is. Um, this simple logical uh, description of what it is. So it is cloud architecture, what, which I'll say at the top. What does that mean? Uh, it means all you'll need to use this environment is your CC account, uh, a designer or prototyping subscription, and then be able to have access to most of the tools that you have access to through your subscription. Most because the licensing of some uh, does not, or we haven't moved them yet. Um, but that is something you can follow with Mapper to find out as well. So we have this, uh, if, you, if you just connect right now, it's your design environment. So the tools you have uh, are probably going to be there and you'll be able to use them. So a big you add that, that we're doing besides providing the environment itself is uh, defining some methodologies and, and sometimes courses that can operate in this environment. So uh, the three that I have here, uh, the best one is the one we're going to talk about later today, the silicon photonic design environment. We also have an analog mixed training environment that is uh, based on a kind of a general purpose kit by Cadence. We uh, have others currently under development, and we also have a process for adding new ones if, if uh, based on the feedback we hear from, from researchers like yourselves, uh, things missing from the environment that we'll want to consider adding. The thing that differentiates CMC's NDN cloud from, say, Amazon, besides the academic subsidies, is we, we have configured the environment with things that will really accelerate the research. It's already installed with the CAD tools that we that CMC supports and provides. Uh, uh, process sign kits that, when we can uh, distribute them, they will be pre-installed and configured in the environments for you to use. Our big differentiator is there's persistent storage. So this is a uh, predominantly virtual uh, environment. So you can create your virtual machines. Um, you can create for, you say, a week. But with a, uh, a file system that you save your work, and then when your virtual machine is gone, you can then continue on your work the next time and just a new machine or create a, a different server, a different 
type of virtual machine, but the file system will still be there. And also, uh, you know, based on the team's experience uh, with supplying these CAD tools uh, across Canada, um, this how license configuration uh, configured and is transparent to you, the user. So uh, you don't have to, to work this thing if uh, you know. So Prerequisite: You have a subscription, and you've identified the CAD tools you want to use. You assume that work is already done for you in this environment. The geography of the, the environment. So the existing installation is uh, here in Kingston, Ontario. Uh, there's also on, on this map overlay. I have uh, one uh, server indicated in Alberta. That's uh, for for licensing. The, the main cloud infrastructure is in Kingston. Um, I'll have a, uh, you know, a project roadmap, um, a fill up where we're going to be adding bigger infrastructure uh, elsewhere in Ontario and all, as well as uh, in BC. You might be wondering, um, just because it's interesting, why would you want to use the NDA cloud? So uh, here's that STC term again. Um, basically, in brackets, I have a, a local CAD server. So some of the more complete design tools, like uh, management analysis, for example, require configuration and scripts and a whole bunch of tools as prerequisite to run them. Uh, and Ram will go into more detail about uh, the model that CMC has been using before the cloud and, and relates to the cloud. Uh, but you know, it works well for for institutions that have these, these extra administrators available to them, but we know that in reality that's not the case. It's not all of these expert resources available, and we'd like these, uh, these great enterprise-grade tools to be available to to everybody, regardless of if they have these uh, highly trained uh, personnel at their institutions or not. Uh, and the, the licensing configuration for those tools can also be complex. And it's pretty simple in this pre-configured environment. Uh, uh, the reason why you might want to use it is the high-quality server infrastructure. So the, the machines that are running this cloud are uh, very end machines that are designed specifically for this purpose, designed to be used by uh, researchers like yourself. So if you've gone through CMC's flow for other tools and you're using these successfully on your, your laptop or your, your local workstations. Uh, we're not saying that's going away. If you're happy with that, then that's great. Uh, we're not, you know, eliminating any of our delivery mechanisms uh, moving to the cloud. Uh, but if you need to get a boost in uh, performance, anything, uh, definitely the cloud is going to be higher performance than uh, your, your local equipment. Uh, I will note that it's not uh, ABC. Um, so we talk a little bit about that in the in the roadmap. And uh, the last bullet I'll, I'll mention on this slide, and one thing that is, is very huge is the time when you learn you want to use a, a technology or CAD tool that by CMC. Time that you are actually using it, um, it is hugely reduced if you use the Andean Cloud. You can fully be utilizing these tools once you say, hey, I want to use this within minutes if, if, uh, if you use the cloud versus, you know, if you have the highly qualified personnel or the local equipment or any of the prerequisites to, to doing this on your own systems. I'm going to be talking about months, uh, even if uh, you learn to do this and you want to get it running right away. And uh, here's the last one. <laughs> so. Uh, the right side of the previous slide that I'll just remind you, or on the second previous slide, is your immediate access to CMC supported design flows. So that's where we uh, can take uh, you know an end-to-end -end process where there might be uh, three tools and a, a PDK all in, in the flow, uh, but these are very fully verified by by CMC engineers, and we'll be able to get very good support in them because our engineers are going to be using the same environments that you're using. So the, the roadmap, uh, and the roadmap, it's also the, the uh, area of the history. So 
uh, January 2016. So uh, more that we've been running this infrastructure in a pilot mode uh, for for maybe the entire of 2015. Uh, but 16, uh, when we we launched the silicon touch design environment in a, a full production uh, mode, and we have, we have the persistent source that I mentioned, uh, the Linux environment. So now, if we go forward to to now this month, uh, we are going to be introducing persistent storage in Windows uh, very shortly within this month, uh, as well as um, that that storage right now is is your storage. So when you log into the environment, you have files. No one can see them, um, but you know that's secure. And we've had feedback on that. But we've heard that you know a group of researchers wants to share some files. So we we have a process uh, with which we can make a shared file system. So a group of researchers can not only have their own Person uh, storage, but they can also have a shared file system that they can all access and, and collaborate with. In the fall this year, um, taking or extending that shared file system a little bit, we're the uh, uh, using infrastructure. So there's a repository uh, source control system. So you know, it's the, the the shared file system sounds great on paper. But, but in reality, uh, I, I know when you increase the number of players, people are going to start on each other's toes and, and that sort of thing. So at this GitHub like for a subversion group of uh, the repository and revision control, uh, what people to do is check out their own local copies. And when they're checking in uh, design files that they're collaborating on, they're going to make sure they're merging with, with people's uh, design work as well. Uh, make contacts through these established tools rather than you know through email or something like that. And the uh, geography slide when I when I said the the, the infrastructure slow. So that's going to happen in, in 2017. Um, so when exactly it depends on you know how many people are using the infrastructure right now because it um, is a very sufficient size and enterprise grade. So we wouldn't want to provide more infrastructure when we don't need it. Uh, right now, we're we're thinking the towards the end of 2017 um, for the for the infrastructure scale. Uh, so uh, when I mentioned HPC, uh, so there is a cloud environment. It's not an HPC environment. Uh, we are uh, working on a process to streamline HPC access. So if you have um, a design you're working on in this environment. And you know CAD tools that you're using do support uh, HVC uh, environments like cluster computing, for example. Uh, working with HVC centers that uh, we already have strong relationships with uh, to offload your, your designs into those environments where you have to, you know, log systems, create out from these other systems and wait for their IT team to get back to you and, and follow a whole different slew of uh, documentation. But you'll be able to do it within, you know, a, a streamlined process through CMC uh, through this environment. And that last bullet uh, indicates there is the identity consolidation. So we have these good relationships. They, uh, these HPC centers that we work with, they know that CMC has a very good vetting process for our clients, and the clients are definitely who they say they are and are high quality researchers. So we need to, the researchers re go through all those groups that they've already gone through to get access to CNC uh, infrastructure. Pages that are in the NDN cloud right now. Here's the list. Uh, this list is also on our website. Um, and uh, I have at the bottom that you can contact licensing at CNC uh, for, for any details on these, or if there's any that you see on our website that you don't see here. Uh, so one thing I will uh, mention on that is uh, if you don't see TDK here, uh, it doesn't mean that it cannot be used in, in this environment. Uh, it just means there might be uh, an additional process to get it in here. And we definitely uh, want here uh, if, if there is something that you want to see that, that you don't see in this list, and we definitely want to work with you to get it in there. So. 
to access the Indian cloud. So right now, um, I'm not sure how many of the people on the call are already uh, seniors with a designer or programming subscription. Um, but if you have that already and you have never even heard of the Indian cloud, you can do it right now. There's no additional charges or fees. Um, the second sub-bullet here is that the, the CAD tools that you want to use in the environment and any agreements for the PDKs, for example, those have to be in place before you're able to use them. Um, so around, even if you don't have those, you'll be able to log into the Indian Cloud, but if you want to use a tool that you have uh, in the CNC that you want to use, you won't be able to get the license for it, for example. Uh, um, if, if you're a Cadence user, for example, you'll be able to, to log them to the to the Indian Cloud and run the Cadence tools. Uh, and we have a lot of documentation on, on the typing that you can do. These things that we worked with uh, researchers to, to develop these documents. Uh, we have kind of, it, it does everything that you can do in here. Uh, so if uh, you don't see something or, or don't know how to do something, you can definitely shout out to us um, through licensing at TMCA. I also present my, my email address at the end of this webinar if you, if you don't have it uh, using CMC support form. Uh, this is available for commercial users as well. Uh, so it is a, a little bit more of an ad hoc access uh, because there could be different licensing requirements depending on where the, the user is coming from and what, what they want to access. Uh, all those requests should go to, to Ray Filto. And email is here, but his, uh, his contact information is also on the website uh, with all the, the PDKs that I mentioned previously. Uh, I have here, for example, there's a, the mentor after so Kim Photonics kit um, that Trish may or may not mention specifically in her pre presentation, but um, it is one that um, we do have commercial users using it, and they're using the cloud, and uh, they're, they're having a very good experience. And being uh, as academic for the process is contact us. If you don't need something, um, there's are in, in reaching out to us, and we want to work with you to, to get what you need in this environment. It's, a, it's another screenshot. This is a, another thing that subscribers can see right now. And if you have been using uh, our CAD tools, you might recognize this report. I'll link to where you can see this uh, at the bottom of the page. Uh, the C is uh, when you log into this report application, is any CAD licenses that you've already uh, aided to CMC, either by uh, getting them with your subscription or putting an addition to your subscription, you'll be able to. Licenses you have here, if they're available to your team or if other people in your group are using them, and what the, the server capacity is for those licenses. Um, so, what we've done to this report is we've just we added another column um, indicates that same information I just said, but it also indicates uh, if a tool is not actually available in the Indian cloud. So, what you can hear is the tools uh, in the uh, Campus Solutions uh, Research uh, Bundle, uh, Ames University Bundle, uh, Comstol, Adult, and LabU. Uh, you can see all of them with the exception of LabU are available in the Indian Cloud. Uh, however, you can explicitly see that LabVIEW is not available in the Indian Cloud. Uh, it's not available for, for the number of licenses. It's just uh, the technology and the licensing that management in software itself. Uh, this is uh, also displayed on our, our public website, so don't have a subscription. Uh, if you go to our CAD tools page, you are able to see which of our tools um, are in the cloud and which ones aren't. And, uh, you know, I, I mentioned it many times, and I'll, I'll do it again, is if, if there's a tool that we don't indicate that is available in the Indian cloud, but you'd like to see it there, uh, we'd like to hear that because uh, we have uh, all these things in, in our pipeline. Uh, we can definitely shift priorities of things and bump things up the list if, if we know that um, you're asking for it. Uh, and this is the last slide in, in what I want to talk about in, in the in cloud in general. Um, so with that, I, I will pass it over to Rab, who will talk about uh, the FCC a little more and then tools that provide the environment to accelerate your, your, your research. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, everybody. Uh, over the next few minutes, I'll be talking about the, the FCC 
Mansi and how Indian clouds relate to it and what MC has done to uh, develop some tools that make the use of CAD tools much more easier and much more convenient. So uh, talk about STC as most of you are aware that STC is, so STC first of all stands for Supported Technology Configuration. What that means is it's a set of tools and signed kits and scripts uh, that are supported by CMC that C facilitates and provides that to end users for uh, for running their research and using those tools. So this slide, uh, this is basically a snapshot of the STC process flow, where if you look on the left-hand side, which is CMC STC that has key vendors uh, and more vendors to it than listed here, but these are some of the key that we uh, that they're there. And there's various tools within each of the vendors that are uh, supported by CMC. Uh, there are scripts that are provided along with these tools to facilitate and help running those tools, and all the set of design kits that are available as part of STC within CMC. Uh, the key point here is that these tools are made available and and they are to an on-demand sync from CMC to various sites. Uh, we have a, so if you look on the right-hand side of the tool, there is sites that request sync through an application called CMC View, and then they're available to individual sites for use by research users. If you can see, one thing which I wanted to highlight as a key, and if we do a walkthrough of a process flow, is any tool or design kit that is required is as a request, which gets installed within CMC first, tested, validated before it gets released to, for the end user community to be used. Forward, a similar STC environment will be available with an Endian cloud as well. That will be one step forward to make uh, the tools available with the ease of use for such and for users there, where there's constraint in terms of adding the complexity to maintain a local STC, which uh, was stated by Omen that taking away that complexity and providing and making the ease of use is a key to for NDN. Uh, able to uh, so they're moving to the Indian cloud and putting a tool to to look tools will ease. Uh, we've developed a tool called CAD Launcher. And Launcher is nothing but it's an interface that provides an ease of use for running the tools and design kits. Uh, to highlight the key features as displayed on this particular slide, it's interface to launch design tools and design kits. Uh, it, it provides a convenience of use for launching these tools. Uh, it's configurable, it's easy to maintain, and it also provides the ability to customize based on individual users. And I'll, I'll go into details through the next slides, uh, but one of the things that is it will integrate with the, with the end cloud as a process flow to get convenience and ease of use for running these research tools. Um, moving to the next slide. So this is just to give you a graphic view of what CMC CAD launcher looks like. So basically it's an interface here. If you look at the top, there's a of tools, the button for tools and kits. So use that be launching the tools. You click tools button and it plays all the tools that are be available. We run from this launcher. And at the display here, if you see there's, we've done a use case here. So if you select mentor graphics, all the various flavors of different tools that are available under Mentor Graphics. And you have a start button. What the button does is it launches the tool in the background, gives you a running log. Panel button is another way of launching for users that, that are more uh, than, you know, having a terminal and more control while they're launching these tools. We have that capability as well to give them terminal and so they, they can control various things in their session. 
Moving on to the next slide, so I'll talk a little bit more about an application. Once you've identified the tool you want to run, you click the Start button, it, and what does it is, it launches the tool in the background and there's an output log file as shown here, and where you can see a running log of how the application is running, and you can continue to use the tool. Uh, one thing to note here is that uh, it does the ability to run multiple tools within the same session. So you're not consented by you know, running one application per session. You can use multiple of these. Slide. Uh, this is more, as I talked about, having a term type of environment. So uh, there's users who prefer using having a terminal window alongside when they're running their tools. So if you select the terminal option, what it does, it will set up an environment for you. It will launch the tool for you. But what it will also do is open up a terminal window beside it where you can go in and uh, various sorts of things, right, to see the progress, to, you know, see how the server is behaving or look at various log files that uh, sometimes users uh, want to do. But but using it in a background or terminal, uh, it's the same concept here that, you know, making ease and providing that convenience for launching these tools. Next one. So just to show that uh, we also have that capability where if you have errors that uh, that generated by launching the tool. So just to capture that and uh, to show the users, uh, you know, how can capture errors and you know users are uh, can take corrective action to make this tool work. Um, so uh, this was regarding. So this was all on from a you know NC and 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 out along with the launcher aspect. And from then on, I'll pass on to Trish uh, for the next set of slides. Good afternoon from Kingston, Ontario. This part of the webinar will focus on CAD in a virtual environment that can be flexible, adaptable, and portable for our subscribers. While we focus on the design and fabrication of silicon photonics up to the product level, we believe that the design, make, test order that we're presenting is universal. And you to use these presentations today to build up your familiarity with our services. It's all for you to use them. It's like drunken cross-eyed penguins because there are plenty of them. Microsystems first extended commercial CAD tools and transistor fabrication kits to Canadian universities. The model one-to-one -one mapping of its master disk to the local disk at each university. We updated at regular intervals with newer versions of the CAD tools or the kits or new kits. And the invention of local STC managers. The STC, as you now know, means supported technology configuration. Our TZ disk is copied to local Linux servers and used through local Linux accounts, in other words. Students use these CAD tools in university computing clusters. Over the years, these local Linux servers broke down, were replaced, the number of kits grew to include MEMS and smaller university fabs, and then photonics. As taught by, new commercial CAD tools appeared for Windows operating systems, or CAD tools were offered with packages for Windows installation. OS emerged as an alternative operating system. With less access on campuses and in the home, students wanted the freedom to do their layouts and simulations wherever they chose to sit. And why not? Our technology group has built upon a CAD backbone, this STC disk, to present in kits and training accounts for Canadian subscribers in formats that are best suited to their situations and locations. Cartoons do not show the licensing mechanisms, CAD pass or CAD activate. We show our separate license server network, and that is a lengthy presentation all on its own. Worthy study. A typical STC disk, you saw a high-level high overview, courtesy of my colleague Raman Dev. Um, is wordy, but me in a nutshell. Does the complete time make test flow of a product through commercial CAD vendor tools? This is not a list, nor does it cover all the modules that each vendor supplies. We can say with confidence that a team of engineers would recognize the different electrical, mechanical,
ethical quality assurance software list here. What's about this diagram is to note that all these tools can be linked to one Linux account, so you could conceivably have your entire design flow in one cloud instance. Uh, here, unfortunately, and it's not our fault, it's the optical alignment tool. Here, know of a good lens design and alignment software program available for Linux. Uh, let's know its name. We have a look at it. We have the Emacs uh, program Optics Studio for Windows, but for Windows only. We instance is using Microsoft Windows as well. I won't be describing their capabilities today. However, many photonic specialty tools are available only for Windows. Uh, contact us to learn more about this option. In 15, we opened up our first cloud server for general access. Oh, the pilot server, and that's what we refer to it internally. Yes. Three types of users. Fretted silicon photonics designers, people who had come from the Ethic Workshop or the edX program. That's available at the edX website. Uh, ready access to an SDC server in home departments or at their universities. And who wanted to take closer looks at certain technologies. Silicon Photonics, I might add. Our class effective and reasonable way for non-academics to make prototypes or to participate in one of fabrication runs. Each is secure, simple, and robust. We have instant storage of design files with security set up against evil hacking geniuses. And we have in place with users and vendors to prevent misunderstandings concerning and geographical restrictions. Uh, what did our first users then? Possibly the biggest small country in the world. Constantly a data packet traveling round trip from Halifax to Kingston has hundreds of kilometers through busy networks. One of our virtual client, one of our virtual access clients is called No Machine at an H.264 data rate, and this is the ideal to which we strive. Uh, it's achievable. So we found out. <laughs> As scripting making a comeback. Well, from Mr. Deb's presentation, uh, the launcher was a way of getting around that, so people didn't have to learn the specifics of Linux scripting. Uh, and then, how do we improve our service? Well, you all know one way. The answer was we loo. Uh, the Denver network picture in this slide. I added it to it at one of his slides as well. The network is comprised of provincial and regional members across the country. Country. from about 10 gigabit now is the standard on the optical fiber, about 100 gig in certain densely populated regions, Toronto being one example. The network is called Orion, but every province has its own. Uh, please look at the Canary or Canary website for what's going on there. They have a listing of all their partner organizations and people who are using their services, large projects, access to high performance computing environments. And, uh, they also have a very interesting YouTube channel, on say or on in English, and videos are quite informative. We returned to the original diagram, the wordy one. We took some of the words off, though. You a design to lay out to fixture CAD flow for a silicon photonic system. Do you have the slide? All the books presented above are in some way relevant to silicon photonics. And it, as was mentioned, should have perhaps been a process kit. Uh, we would demonstrate where the parts of the kit are imported and where they're relevant in each part of the game. Um, is unfortunately at a premium for us today. So if there is interest in such detail, you're welcome to write to us or call us to find out more. Okay. I'll leave you with this. Um, as my colleagues mentioned, uh, there's room for expansion, and there are ways to adapt this environment so that you can tailor it to best suit yourself. Um, I spoke of a high-performance computing service that we have set up individual users with. Uh, have some satisfied customers now um, with the AMP to uh, they specialize in doing large multi-core simulations. There's a great deal of information on their websites about their benchmarking program. 
we have been taking a project. It's, it's in its nascent phase right now where we will be building up, we hope build up, a repository process information for the various micro and nanotechnology fabs of the country. Uh, I have a better environment in which to operate these tools and to store this information than ours at this time. Uh, I think that it would be ideal because people can, as Owen said, they have shared resources. Uh, look at the DAP recipes, uh, what have you. That, that, that we're forming this one right now, so I can't really speak more to it than I already am. am. I, do, I do want to extend this offer out. Actually, my group, actually, yeah, two weeks previous group was undertaking um, some cover training to be an LBS rule writing course. And conducted online by a very knowledgeable person from graphics. We listened and we did our labs online using a virtual account and through a presentation. A tremendous experience. It worked all. Well. My group did it tremendously. They were able to take course in the luxury of their own homes on the Victoria Day holiday. And I think this kind of, perhaps not on national holidays, but this kind of environment would work very well for course delivery across the country. You can examples of these types of courses at the edX website. I use pre-prepared video for the demos and the lessons, and then you work on and you would send questions into the website so they're passed along to the professors or the team. Uh, this we experienced it was real time, so we had immediate answers to our queries. And I'm going to return to. And I thank you very much for your attention. So, uh, before going on to the, the questions, answers, um, I'd like to, to acknowledge uh, these funding agencies and, and uh, service providers uh, who, you know, with support, we wouldn't be able to make this infrastructure uh, possible. Uh, so, uh, if uh, when reporting of these this presentation, I I, I can do the research or to review I'd rather uh, list the names on this and and maybe how you can work with them as well uh, potentially. Um, so we are at the the Q and A point in the, the webinar, but before that, um, I would like to, to mention because I know I was just reviewing you know the different communications that went out on on the webinar and um, one of the big communications. Meant a live demo. Now, for for a number of reasons, um, we're we're not going to be doing live demo. Um, the biggest reason is you know, I want you to know how good an experience using this is compared to what you're used to working on a, a desktop. And I think showing you that through a web app probably wouldn't translate the the message very well. As I mentioned, if you have a subscription already, then you have access. So for, for the demo portion, I, I encourage you to, to log in. Uh, you, if you go to the address we display here, uh, ncwca slash NDN cloud, uh, there's to the documentation that will get help get started with um, connecting to the to the environment. Uh, if, if you don't have a subscription, you can all get a demo. Uh, just contact me. Uh, my email address is there. It's owain.jones at cmc.ca. And we can get uh, get you set up with a 30-day uh, trial uh, subscription that you can use to try out uh, some of our CAD tools in the NDN cloud. So um, we're, whichever CAD you belong to, or uh, one that I don't mention here is commercial, uh, we'd really like to hear from you as well, uh, how you could check this out without actually investing anything at this point uh, for a demonstration purpose, we, we definitely want to see you on here. I have the, the reminder that if you're a subscriber, you can try it now. Uh, and also any feedback uh, that you want to take offline that you don't want to have a question uh, right now, uh, please uh, send me an email. Uh, there it is again. And, and the, the subject, I, I put a few ideas here, but it couldn't be really anything. But uh, if you'd like to see a future webinar, maybe where we do have a demo uh, or in, in more specific in a different topic area, um, 
or uh, like I said about monitor our, our priorities for, for what we're going to be accomplishing over the next year in our, our roadmap. Uh, that I think will any questions in the QA? Yeah, there's a few questions just on the top chat there. One there. All right, the question is, is the licensing work the same? As CAD for license access. So, so you know, there's, uh, I guess, no additional cost for using uh, the tools in the cloud, in the NDN cloud. Uh, you, you do have to have the license um, in advance. So, the process you're, you're using to get the licenses, if you're already getting the license from CMC, whether it's included subscription or purchasing them in addition, uh, that won't change. The uh, difference is um, uh, you purchase one, and you don't have to say, I want to use it locally or I want to use it in the cloud. Um, it's, it's one feat of that license, or, or depending on like case management synopsis, it's unlimited access, uh, which includes locally and in the cloud. Uh, the next question, are there any uh, online videos about those uh, rather than documents to help get started? So uh, we don't have any right now, but if there um, is some specific use case, uh, we can easily, um, well, one of two things, we can easily create a video uh, and, and provide that to you, or we can arrange a you know one-on-one -on -one support session where we can uh, walk you through it using one of our uh, accounts uh, if, you, if you don't have access, or, or with using your account if that's what you prefer. Uh, of course, there's no videos right now, but uh, that definitely shouldn't stop you um, from, from contacting us because if we have a document or a video on it, uh, we really can have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, go over whatever you're curious about. And oh, one more. And Of the, the PAs, um, there was a, one of our, our experts in the room who's not in the room anymore. I can't actually say uh, um, they are in the cloud or not. Um, but again, uh, if it weren't in the list or if they were in the list and you want to know if they're in the cloud, um, we had a conversation offline. Um, I'm the, the best to answer that question, but I'll definitely. Put you in touch. Our experts just, just walk back to the room. So, do you know what these speed is? No. No, you don't know. Uh, the TSM 18, I know, as far as we have it in STC, should be available in the NDN cloud. But uh, this Producing AZ in our standard FTC, I have no idea. Okay, so yeah, it's, uh, once you're really specific, there's there's definitely uh, engineers at CMP who will know the answers. Uh, we know the answer right now, um, but again, the the prerequisites have to be in place. So if the PKs uh, need a technology usage agreement at your university or uh, a specific Agreement with SMC or Moses uh, that still needs to be in place for it to be in the cloud. Um, but the cloud will be an option once you have those pieces in place. All right, I think that's that's it for questions. So um, I thank everybody for for uh, just today, and uh, we will be we did record this. Uh, webinar, so we will be sending it out uh, later to the people who attended, also people who uh, registered um, but weren't able to attend. Uh, and my email is right here, so if there's any questions you have that you'd rather take offline, uh, don't hesitate to send me an email, and uh, I'll, I'll definitely follow up. All right, thanks, and have a great